Summary of Emotional Labor, The Hidden Cost of Caring and How to Manage It, by Rose Hackman. Ever feel like you're carrying the weight of everyone's emotions on your shoulders? Discover the invisible work of emotional labor, how it silently drains your energy, and what you can do to manage it effectively in both your personal and professional life. Emotional labor is the often overlooked, yet essential, task of managing feelings, both yours and others. It can happen at work, in relationships, or even in daily interactions. While it's a crucial part of maintaining harmony, the burden can be overwhelming, leading to burnout, stress, and feelings of being unappreciated. In this audiobook, we will explore the science behind emotional labor, why it disproportionately affects certain groups, and how you can protect your well-being while still nurturing the relationships that matter. Focus points. Understanding emotional labor, what it is, where it shows up, and why it matters. The hidden costs. How emotional labor affects your mental and physical health over time. Workplace dynamics. Why women and marginalized groups often bear the brunt of emotional labor in the office. Personal relationships. How emotional labor plays a role in friendships, family, and romantic partnerships. Setting boundaries. Practical strategies to manage emotional labor without sacrificing your well-being. Self-care and recovery. Techniques to recharge emotionally and mentally after a heavy load of emotional labor. Learning outcomes. Understand the concept of emotional labor and recognize how it impacts different areas of life. Identify the invisible ways emotional labor drains energy and leads to burnout. Learn how to set clear boundaries in both personal and professional environments to manage emotional labor more effectively. Explore strategies to protect mental health while maintaining emotional balance in relationships. Gain actionable self-care tips to replenish emotional reserves and prevent exhaustion from emotional labor. This audiobook aims to empower you with the knowledge and tools needed to navigate the demands of emotional labor, making it a transformative experience for listeners. Focus point one, equal but not quite, the illusion of progress for women. Imagine for a moment if we could theoretically teleport a woman from 200 years ago to the present day. She would undoubtedly be amazed by the progress. Women now have the right to work, earn their own money, open a bank account, attend college and vote in elections. These are monumental achievements that would have been unimaginable in her time. However, we must not be deceived by these advancements. Though they represent significant progress, they are often surface-level changes. At best, they are the first cautious steps on a long, difficult path toward true equality, a path still obstructed by toxic masculinity and deeply entrenched patriarchal norms, men's dominance in power and wealth. Despite these gains for women, men continue to thrive at a much higher level, particularly in positions of power and wealth. Just take a look at a publication like Forbes. In 2021, the list of the world's richest individuals was dominated almost entirely by white men. By 2022, a mere 6.2% of Fortune 500 CEOs were women. This underrepresentation is not just limited to business. Even on a national scale, men are overwhelmingly in charge. The United States, for example, has only ever had male presidents. These examples reflect a persistent pattern of male dominance that women, despite their advances, have yet to break through fully. Gender equality, a concept in name only. While gender equality is a widely used term, in practice, it often feels like women are playing a never-ending game of catch-up. Women may now be allowed to participate in the workforce and leadership roles, but the game is rigged. The rules are still stacked in favor of men. Beyond being competent and confident, women are also expected to embody traits that the world traditionally associates with femininity, such as compassion, empathy, and kindness. These qualities are not inherently negative or demeaning, but they impose an invisible expectation for women to prioritize the emotional needs of others over their own. This emotional labor, unseen but always present, compels women to constantly put others first, often at the expense of their own ambitions and well-being. In this audiobook, we will explore the hidden burden of emotional labor that women continue to bear, how it impacts their lives, and what can be done to challenge these outdated societal expectations. Focus point two, empathy is not gendered, challenging emotional labor stereotypes. 
Jennifer eagerly awaited Mother's Day, hoping for a rare moment of rest and some me time, but her plans were abruptly disrupted when her family decided to gather for the anniversary of her father's passing. Despite her grief, her busy schedule, and the family's financial limitations, Jennifer took on the burden of preparing for the event. Why? Because it was expected of her. As a woman, society often demands that she sacrifice her comfort to serve others, ensuring that everyone has a positive experience, regardless of her own feelings. The hidden cost of emotional labor for women. Time is one of our most valuable resources, yet many women are forced to sacrifice it regularly for the sake of others. This kind of emotional labor, caring for others' needs while neglecting their own, often goes unnoticed because society has long associated such duties with women's natural abilities. There is a false assumption that women are inherently more emotional or empathetic, which silences any complaints they might have. When women express frustration, they're told, but you're good at this, or fed myths that men and women's brains are biologically different. But these justifications are flimsy at best, and here's why. The brain isn't gender-fixed. Our brains are not hardwired for specific behaviors based on biological sex. Instead, they adapt and evolve according to the social and cultural context in which we live. Patriarchal systems shape women's brains in ways that make them internalize feelings of inferiority and suitability for emotional labor, even though this is a learned behavior, not an inherent trait. Men are equally capable of emotional labor. While it's commonly believed that men lack empathy, studies suggest otherwise. In one experiment, men were offered monetary rewards for correctly identifying empathetic responses, and they performed just as well as women. This shows that men, with the right incentives or motivation, can be just as empathetic as women. Double standards in emotional labor. Despite their capacity for empathy, when men perform even the smallest acts of emotional labor, society heaps praise upon them. If a man sacrifices a bit of his time to care for his family, he is often lauded as an exceptional father or partner. Meanwhile, women spend 37% more time on emotional labor than men, yet their efforts go unpaid, unnoticed, and underappreciated. This double standard reinforces the societal expectation that emotional labor is a woman's duty, while any effort from men is seen as above and beyond. In this narrative, it's clear, empathy is not gendered, and emotional labor should not be an invisible, gender-based expectation placed solely on women. Focus point three, pretty powerless the unseen challenges of women in the public eye. Imagine seeing a male colleague rushing down the hall with a serious expression. Most people would assume he's deeply focused and busy with important work. But when a woman wears the same serious face, the reaction is often different. People perceive her as cold or unapproachable. Why isn't she smiling? This double standard was glaringly apparent during the 2016 presidential campaign where Hillary Clinton faced relentless criticism for not being smiley or warm enough. In her documentary, Hillary revealed that she spent an extraordinary amount of time on her appearance, makeup, hair, and attire, just to be perceived as presentable. By her calculations, 25 days of her 600-day campaign were dedicated to these preparations, an expectation that was never placed on her male opponent. Emotional expression, a gendered paradox. Despite society teaching men to suppress their emotions, they enjoy far greater freedom in how they express themselves. For women, however, stepping into the spotlight often leads to intense scrutiny, where they're judged not only for their abilities but also for how they look and behave. This scrutiny often comes wrapped in sexism, which manifests in two distinct forms. Hostile sexism. This overt form of sexism is characterized by aggressive stereotypes and prejudices. Hostile sexists view women as manipulative and untrustworthy, questioning their capacity to lead or succeed. They fear women's supposed manipulation tactics and believe women do not belong in positions of power. Hostile sexism is blatant and, unfortunately, still prevalent in many circles. Benevolent sexism. In contrast, benevolent sexism appears kinder on the surface but is equally damaging. Benevolent sexists shower women with compliments like sweetheart, or baby, praising them for being modest, pure, or nurturing. However, 
these men hold women to impossible standards of femininity, and the moment a woman steps outside those boundaries, through her choice of clothing or personal behavior, she faces swift judgment and humiliation. Benevolent sexism is insidious because it disguises control and judgment as concern or flattery, reinforcing harmful gender norms. The setup, women in a no-win situation. This entire system creates a trap for women, especially those in the public eye. Society's hunger for their visibility is matched only by the readiness to criticize them once they step into view. As Rose Hackman eloquently puts it, the whole mechanism is a setup that enables us to blame and dehumanize women for the very exhibition we are so hungry to consume. Women are expected to be perfect, approachable, attractive, and ever smiling. But when they fail to meet these impossible standards, they are quickly devalued or ridiculed. The burden of these unrealistic expectations keeps many women feeling powerless, even when they achieve positions of influence or success. Focus point four, the cost of caring, the unseen emotional labor of women and nannies. Many women feel like they have countless tabs open in their minds with a significant portion dedicated to child care. It's understandable. Raising children requires an immense amount of emotional labor. Kids need love, attention, guidance, and nurturing. They crave cuddles, jokes, answers to their endless questions, and homemade meals. Some women take on this demanding task themselves, while others rely on nannies to share the emotional and physical load. Both choices are valid, depending on personal circumstances and needs. Dismissing women's concerns is unjust. The emotional labor that comes with caregiving is often underestimated or dismissed, which is absurd given the real toll it takes. Historically, the roots of nannying in America are intertwined with slavery. Wealthy white women often sought out enslaved black women, even those who had recently given birth, to leave their own children behind and care for white infants. This created a cruel cycle where black women were tasked with raising future generations of enslavers while their own children grew up in deprivation. This painful history gave rise to the mammy trope, a cheerful, ever-present, nurturing black woman, completely devoted to the white family she served. This stereotype painted black women as perfect for domestic labor, suggesting that their emotional labor was an innate quality rather than a job. In reality, these women had lives, families, and communities of their own, but their portrayal in movies and books distorted the truth, making it easier to justify their exploitation. Today's nannies, a continuation of emotional exploitation. Fast forward to today, and women of color still make up a significant portion of the domestic workforce, often in nannying roles. Yet, they hold very little power when it comes to their rights and working conditions. Around 23% of domestic workers are illegally underpaid, and many nannies face additional challenges such as toxic work environments, sexual harassment, and poor labor protections. In order to survive, they often have no choice but to endure these unjust conditions. At the heart of this issue is a deeply ingrained belief that emotional labor, acts of care, love, and empathy are not real work. This mindset continues to hinder progress toward labor rights and fair compensation for nannies and caregivers everywhere. As Rose Hackman so aptly put it, it is the propagation of a belief that love and empathy in action are not work that helps hinder labor rights and proper pay. Focus point five, boys will be human, breaking the chains of toxic masculinity. The phrase boys will be boys has long been used as an excuse to brush off men's harmful behaviors. Whether it's trashing an apartment after a drunken night or bullying female classmates, society often overlooks such actions. In a high-profile 2013 case in Ohio, two teenage football stars were convicted of sexually assaulting a girl, and despite the severity of the crime, their community rallied around them. Boys will be boys, they said, excusing their behavior in favor of maintaining school pride. But this dangerous mindset perpetuates the idea that boys are beyond accountability. Equality requires support for both genders. Men's frustrations with feminist movements sometimes come with the argument, but what about men? They point to men's higher involvement in war, dangerous jobs, and their elevated depression and suicide rates. These facts are indeed concerning, but the point of the gender equality conversation isn't about who suffers more. It's about how the patriarchy harms both men and women. 
While women face emotional labor expectations, men are often trapped in the man box, where qualities like self-sufficiency, toughness, hypersexuality, homophobia, and dominance are held up as ideals of masculinity. In a study across the U.S., the U.K., and Mexico, men who adhered to this rigid definition of manhood had significantly higher rates of suicidal thoughts, 40% compared to just 17% among those who rejected these toxic ideals. This stark difference reveals that men suffer immensely when denied the freedom to express emotions and vulnerability. Just as women need to break free from societal expectations of constant caregiving and empathy, men need emotional connection and empathy to thrive. Studies even show that men who are emotionally engaged with their families and communities have better mental and physical health. For instance, Men who lose their wives unexpectedly are 70% more likely to die prematurely compared to those who had time to prepare for the loss. This shows that emotional connection plays a crucial role in men's well-being. Debunking the myth that emotions are a female trait, by fostering empathy and emotional openness, we can create a more humane world for both men and women. It's time to redefine manhood, not by the limits of the man box, but by the freedom to be fully human. Focus point six, emotional labor in relationships and society. Will emotional labor ever receive the attention it deserves? While it's hard to say how long it will take for society to fully recognize the immense burden it places on women, communication remains the key to change. With the patriarchy deeply rooted in societal structures, openly discussing emotional labor is a powerful first step. Changing relationship dynamics. If you're in a long-term relationship or marriage, it's never too late to reassess how you handle family responsibilities. Here's how to start. Discuss the invisible workload. Have a candid conversation with your partner about the distribution of emotional labor. Who handles the planning, the caretaking, the coordination? Who makes more sacrifices? And who reaps more benefits? Identifying these imbalances is the first step toward creating a fairer dynamic. Let go of compulsive caretaking. Women often perform emotional labor out of habit or because it's expected of them. If you're doing more than your share, even when help is offered, it's essential to recognize this pattern. Setting boundaries and prioritizing self-care is crucial to achieving balance in a relationship. The cost of emotional labor for married women. Married women are particularly vulnerable to the stresses of emotional labor. They are 40% more likely to experience high levels of stress compared to men, and 54% report crying more often due to this stress, compared to just 33% of single women. These figures underscore the importance of having open, honest conversations about the division of emotional labor in a marriage. Addressing emotional labor in the workplace and communities. At work, emotional labor often goes unrecognized, but here are steps that can help bring it to the forefront. Acknowledge its importance. Emotional labor, like other soft skills, is crucial to maintaining a harmonious environment. It should be valued and recognized. Fair distribution. Emotional tasks, such as organizing events, mediating conflicts, and providing support, should be shared among all genders to prevent any one group from shouldering the majority of the burden. Encourage open dialogue. Foster a culture where women and men can freely express concerns about emotional labor. Creating space for feedback helps ensure that this often invisible work is acknowledged and shared. By opening up conversations, whether at home, in the workplace, or within communities, we can begin to dismantle the structures that leave women overburdened and underappreciated. Emotional labor needs to be recognized, shared, and valued for what it is, essential work. Conclusion. In this audiobook, We've explored the often invisible yet crucial topic of emotional labor, particularly its impact on women in relationships, families, workplaces, and communities. Now, let's summarize the key points and leave you with practical recommendations. Key focus points. The heavy emotional load women carry in managing relationships and caregiving. The historical roots of domestic work and how it continues to affect women today. The damaging effects of hostile and benevolent sexism on women's mental and emotional well-being. The societal expectations placed on women to be the primary caretakers, often at the cost of their own mental health. How the man box confines men to suppress their emotions, harming their well-being as well.
Practical Recommendations In Relationships Engage in open conversations with your partner about the division of emotional labor. Make sure responsibilities are shared fairly and set boundaries to avoid compulsive caretaking. At work, push for the recognition of emotional labor as a valuable skill and ensure it is distributed fairly across genders. Encourage open feedback and foster an environment where women can voice their concerns. Self-care. Whether in personal life or at work, it's important to set boundaries and prioritize self-care. Recognize when you're overburdened and seek support. The journey through emotional labor teaches us that societal norms often place an unfair burden on women, but change is possible through awareness and communication. Emotional labor, though often overlooked, is as important as any other form of work, and its fair distribution is key to building balanced, healthy relationships and communities. We truly appreciate your time and interest in this audiobook. Your engagement helps bring this vital topic into the light, contributing to a more equitable future for everyone. If you found this content valuable, please like, subscribe, and share the audiobook with others. Not only does this support our mission to spread awareness, but it also helps with your English language learning journey. The more you listen, the better you speak. Keep engaging with this and other content to improve your fluency and communication skills. Thank you for listening.